airplane meeting wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think you like it. <laughs> um, well, maybe, maybe, can you put a link in the, uh, in the chat? And maybe we could all go. It depends if how other people feel about it. If I, I don't want to throw down on if people are in, if you guys are in a flow, I just showed up. So well, we're kind of like we're what we're doing is we're going through a process of sort of identifying what people's gifts are and what they want to bring to the world. And I'm kind of introducing each person to kind of show who they are. And I mean, I I like the idea of an immediate upgrade. Um, and I think if it's quick, we could all pop in and it might be really fun to do if everyone's into it. I, I'd be down for, uh, for checking out if it's only there for a couple of days and it's a, an opportunity. It sounds like it's, it's, it could be a really good opportunity, right? It's pretty fun. How, how do other people feel? Um, I'm wondering what's going on with Greg when he comes back on. I don't see him back in here yet um right. <laughs> in the middle of saying something yeah that seemed i was interested in it <laughs> um i'm just curious like what is the learning process do we all have to learn how to use it how can we use it instead of zoom like it's a completely different thing and so um do we have to each figure out how to use it before we come in there together um it looked very, when I looked at it, it seemed quite set up quite differently than Zoom. So personally, I don't actually understand. Were, were, you, were, were you able to enter into the world? I, I didn't understand it from the outset. So I'm like, I'm not a video game player. Um, so well, essentially what it is, just so you know, like for, for context, whether we do it or not, because something that we may want to explore in the, in the future is that um, it's like, a, it's just a world. So you have a little character and that character can move around the world and you have a video. So it's just like, imagine Zoom, but except that you're in a world. So when you're standing next to someone and you're talking to them, uh, that's all. It, there's not really anything to do exactly. Um, there, are, there are a couple of options that, are, that make it easier, but it's, it's actually kind of weird. It's hard to explain it until you're, when you're in it, it's pretty intuitive. But if we're waiting for Greg and you're in the middle of a process, then that's fine. Well, no, maybe what we could do is, is when Greg- At the shows, end. Greg shows yeah, up. We could try it like, when it's not high stakes. You know, agrees to then we can jump over. But if you want to continue with the same process, we can just stay and maybe agree as a group to meet at another time to test it out. And if it's within two days, maybe tomorrow, if people can. Yeah, or at the end of this meeting, if people want to take five minutes and there's, if you can't make it or you have to go, but at least a couple of people could check it out and see what they think about it as a, as a platform, and that might be better. Okay. And I don't know, um, <laughs> did you want to respond a bit to what he said, Lara? Uh, that sounds great. I like that idea. Go in there afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah, check it in with, oops, where is Greg? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll send him another message. I don't know where he went. <laughs> well, um, do you want, Lara, would you like to sort of respond or say why you liked what he was saying while we're waiting? Um, well, yeah, he was able to like, look at my idea and be like, yeah, where's the, <laughs> he wanted, yeah, like he was able to, um, you know, give space to let me explain a little bit more, which is even, that's like, hard thing for me because I seem to be more poetic than anything and it's hard for me to write stuff and get like to the point a lot of times but um yeah I think he was he's right with the fact that all of us um were coming together to make a big thing happen it's not just an individual thing like yeah there's individual stuff that we will receive from doing the things that we want to do in the world but in in uh the whole grand scheme of things it's really to 
create more of an e ecological balance between other humans and the rest of the world. That's what I gathered in the last little bit that he was saying. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay, well, he's, yeah. he's still maybe coming. Um, perhaps if we start with somebody else and does everyone agree that we'll, we'll go check out this other place at the end of the call? Is I do. Okay? Is that okay with everybody? All in favor? Me and Brooke have something to go through that we have to get to at five to be there for 5.30. So we probably won't be able to. Okay. Okay. Well, why don't, um, actually then, why don't we go with you guys ahead of Nova just to make sure that uh, we get you. So Lindsay, how about you? Would you like to share? You made a beautiful post the other day on Facebook um, regarding identifying what your gift was. And I, I just thought maybe if you could uh, say something yeah. about that. Um, there's just like a lot of, um, for that one particularly, there was a, um, a program that I had gone into for a month where it was designed to be able to help a person figure out like what kind of career work that they want to be able to go into. But it was designed really beautiful. Um, as like a self-awareness program. So they did like self-assessments and values. They did self-assessments and personalities. And we took like a dozen different kinds of like personality tests and more or less like unanimously, my results were basically the same for every test that I had of like what type of career would be really good for me. But then they also had you analyze like what your strengths were, what your weaknesses were and like in accordance to the jobs that you've had and like what you've liked and what you haven't liked. And so it was really, I think like in alignment to this whole like shifting of how a person looks at work and how you kind of begin to looking at work and not more or less like practical still on like the amount of money and the amount of like time or investment in education. But then also in regards to just like who you are as a person what kind of lifestyle you want what feels good what your strengths are how you connect with people what your energy levels are like if you're introverted if you're extroverted and for me it was it showed me a lot of clarification on um that i am really good with people and i love working with people and i'm really good at facilitating um as a really keen at for interpersonal relationships and sort of like understand people how to manage them how to work around them especially in social groups and that i wouldn't i'm really good at working like i should be in like social work or teaching um but like my big passion that i have sort of been this theme in my life for like the last decade is like wanting to be able to work and create an education system an alternative education system specifically one that works in like a value system and works in an individual's inherent gifts and how to be able to create and foster people while nourishing their like different types of intelligence. If you're artistic, if you're creative, if you're musical, if you're a psychologist, if you're a philosopher, if you're a mathematician or a technological person, being able to like recognize those in kids, foster them and grow them into being able to know that those are their like inherent gifts and just like build like just a different structure that can create this for people and ideally to be able to help them when they get to that like hard time when you're a teenager when hard times in life happen mm -hmm. that you have these like base levels of skills that you've developed of like how to be able to work through trauma and create better decisions and avoid like unhealthy relationships because you have a higher self-esteem because you love the way your body looks because you can deal with conflict better and have developed like communication skills so that you're not afraid to say your mind or like disagree with people because you're scared of them yelling and all these different things. So this is like the dream of my life. And like, I would love to do this. Um, and I feel like it's in alignment with a lot of what Elijah does. And I believe that it's possible to be able to have a lot of the frameworks be sort of like the skeletal bones of what this kind of school builds and like the community that it would create for people and the type of people that would come out of it um yeah that's kind of the gist of that mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow i think Elijah, a little bit of what you were talking about for the post that i had i have this like 
skill and ability where I can connect really like abstract things where they don't really seem like they're connected. But for some reason, my mind kind of sorts things out and I can see a connection between things and a parallel in a relationship where most people kind of don't really see those things or make those connections. And I can do that socially. I can do that individually. I can do that within a business. And I just sort of can like intuitively tell and feel the weak parts of a person or of a group or of an environment and what's missing, and what lacks to be able to help. That's like stopping it from moving forward socially, individually, relationship, business-wise, but then also like I'm really good at organizing so I can like implement these things that can help it become more efficient and move forward. And like within a business, individually, personally, and even within my own like emotional life, so that's like one of the things that I can, I think is an inherent gift that I can offer to people. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, Brooke, would you like to go next? Um, oh. <laughs> sure. Um, what was the question again? Well, sort of like, what is the biggest gift that you want to bring into the world? Like what, what, what is sort of like your vision of what you want to contribute? Yeah. Um, let me see, I wrote some stuff down. Mm, can I think about it and then just go next? Yeah. Um, just to let you know, Greg, uh, I think after we hear from everyone, I'd like you to be last and for you to lead in with your a free 4D free space. And we've agreed afterwards to participate in a different type of infotech that Zamir is bringing in that could be available only just for a couple of days that it's a prototype that could be very interesting or usable. Uh, so just to let you know. So how about uh, Nova, would you like to go next? <coughs> uh, <clears throat> sure. Uh, same question? Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different things I'd like to do in my life, um, but something keeps coming back to me and I've kind of worked on it before and been working on it in the back of my mind for a while. And I think, uh, I guess that my, my reasoning is that uh, I think a lot of the, the uh, problems in the world or perhaps the lack of actual moving towards solutions, uh, I think a lot of that has to do with just how our species um, handles information and knowledge and truth. And I think that uh, it's kind of a little bit fuzzy and obviously like our education systems and social systems seem to have been going opposite lately in improving, uh, you know, everything in a way, uh, a lot of things at least like yeah, social problems are getting worse and I think political problems and a lot of problems are becoming worse and there are a lot of great people that have really good solutions, really good ideas, really good plans. Um, but you know, the, the current power structure isn't supporting that. And I think, you know, the vast billions of people on the planet don't really have access to any kind of ability to help or collaborate. So uh, one of the things I'd like to do or be part of is creating, um, at, at this point, more technological internet-based systems of uh, knowledge gathering, knowledge uh, processing, truth, kind of verifying. Uh, you know, like the idea of Wikipedia, for instance, is pretty cool. Uh, you know, you can look up carrots and learn a lot about carrots. Uh, but if you look up something controversial or something not well known. It's kind of iffy, the information there. And there's not a lot of other tools, I think, available to people, uh, except for like long educational degrees, which are pretty streamlined and uh, probably, you know, they have their own influences as well. Uh, but anyway, I would like to create some systems of, you know, understanding that people can use um, that are, that are built on the internet because it's at the moment pretty open and accessible and, and large. Uh, but like for instance, uh, uh, one quick idea is 
like a tree of facts, all right? Like <clears throat> someone tells you something that they think is true and you know, you can look it up, you can kind of research it, figure out if you think it's true. Um, but generally that kind of work has to be done each time by each person. Otherwise, you know, the other alternative is just to accept the truth or deny it without actually looking into it. Um, and it could be a fact about carrots or it could be uh, a political agenda of a corporation or all sorts of different things. But there's no real system, I think, for humanity to really kind of figure out what's true and sort of start to cement that. Um, we kind of rely on the scientific uh, community and the education community to kind of establish what's true and then teach it to everyone else or at least hold hold it as truth so that we can reference it or believe in it based on what they think. Uh, and that's interesting, it's, it's kind of an old system, but I think uh, we could do it a better one and, or at least an alternative one. Um, but for instance, the tree of facts, you could say, I have a fact here. Um, someone could claim something as a fact and then say, okay, well, what facts support this fact? And then you kind of build a tree and okay, what su facts support this fact? And, you know, a basic tree of facts like that would be interesting, I think, and like little could, people could discuss each fact and whether they think it's true or not and, you know, support it with other facts and so on. And eventually you'd have a bit of a network of things that are provable without having to just rely on a long speech or an essay or a bunch of research material or, you know, just a, a cut and dry statement by someone that we just believe is correct. So I think a system like that would be good. Uh, I would also like to create or be part of creating a system of communication where millions of people could talk together at the same time and form, uh, form plans, form consensus uh, knowledge and a lot of other things like that. You know, the internet is filled with billions of people, but the technology for actual communication is pretty limited. Like Zoom meetings are good, but you can put say 10 or 20 people in. And otherwise, you know, after that, it gets a little ridiculous. Same with chat rooms, you put more than 20 or 30 people in, it doesn't, it's not, you know, it doesn't work. Forums, everything else, they're, they're limited to a very small amount of people when you think about how many are available to talk to each other. So I'd like to be part of pioneering systems that allow people to talk on a mass scale and actually not just talk, but with systems built into that system that allows the masses in the discussion or whatever you wanna call it to begin to form collaborative essays, collaborative questions, collaborative plans, uh, trees of facts of trees or trees of facts and things like that. So that's, I think I have a lot of things I'd like to do in the world and, and for myself and for, you know, I'm very passionate about permaculture and <clears throat> I want to do something with that. But I think what I've talked about here is, is my strongest gift for some reason. Um, I came up with a system to do a lot of this in 2008. I tried to market it and not very good at marketing. It never really caught on. And I've, I've just been surprised for the last 12 years that no other one has done it. You know, we still don't have a mass communication technology. We have, we have chat rooms, forums, video chats. Um, there's some, some cool stuff, but none of it amounts to what I'm really conceiving of. And so I, I think there, it's just up to me to either do it or, or inspire other people to do it or, when you, you know, <laughs> something like that. Thank you, Noah. Uh, that's great. Um, how about you, Chinoa, then Zamir, then Greg? And just know that the timing wise, about five minutes each, just so you know. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm not sure. So I'm just sharing my passion for. Your vision of the creative future for yourself. What do you want to create? Um, well, it's, it's You know, really at this point in my life, I'm feeling like I want to um, bring the best out of all the different things that I've learned through mostly experience, um, my personal experience and my work experience and bring that out um, as a body of work 
and so more it's it's maybe a little bit less um it's maybe a little bit less um focused on sort of the greater world or the greater society but more focused on bringing my work together into sort of a holistic way when it is actually quite divided in a number of different ways i don't know if that makes any sense but it could it could and will include um story writing uh, creative nonfiction, and um, my poetry and my prose work um, and uh, sort of like tidbits of information and wisdom from my many years of working as an intimacy coach. So in terms of a work life, that's sort of what my bigger vision is because I now I feel like I'm more unwinding from uh, things that I really want to create, but it's more like a legacy in a way. Um, because I feel like most of my other personal, most of my other work is done in terms of raising children and being a part of society, etc. And so for here in, in the in this realm, I'm feeling a little bit more like, a, yes, I want to do my own thing, but I'm also quite a support person. So um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah, that's maybe about all I have to say. I'm just sort of figuring out where I figure where I fit in here. Yeah. Thank you, Chino. Okay. And Zamir? Um, yeah, I, I feel I have a number of gifts and in the context of this project, I want to bring whatever one forth that serves this project. Like, I, I feel like there's things that I'm working on in my life in terms of knowledge exchange, particularly in um, uh, knowledge from ancient cultures. I also work in somatic psychotherapy. I'm involved with the wellness collective and I'm passionate about creating community spaces for um, wellness and spiritual growth. So, I mean, like I have a number of aspirations of which I'm working on, which ones bear relevance to this project. I'm more keen to just say, okay, what, what, how can I serve it really? So uh, that's, I don't know if that's answers the question. Do you want me to go more into like my creative thing or more, I just feel more, how can I serve what this is? Because I, I have, you know, thoughts, you know, of how this tool, this divination tool you have is just really useful, like the conversation killers and the particular lenses that have been created for people to think about issues and apply them in their life and their businesses. And they've mostly lived in occasional maps that or you've shared or in individual cards that select groups of people have printed out in their rooms and you know most of us have been touched and seen that there's something valuable and brilliant here and there's this huge potential plan that could unfold but i feel like the most tangible and practical thing that people could use is like this actual tool that you've created and maybe people just start using it and it's available to them Something, I mean, people are going to use it. I mean, you don't know when you put something out in the world how it's going to be used. You have an idea and you can create spaces and ways for you to use it. So I just want to see this tool used by more people because I think it's valuable. So whatever I can do to help that tool be used with what I'm doing, that's what I feel like contributing to the project in terms of my gift. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Zamir. Um, See, if I, if I can just jump in a bit here, there's, there's a difference between what people have to share within their creative world versus some tools that are more conceptual in the mind to share as a reference point to start to bring these things together in perhaps a more holistic way. And each of you, part of my history in a sense, I've spent time with each of you in a different way utilizing the tools, utilizing your time in, in whatever manner. That's why you're here in a sense. And Greg is here a little bit different from the others. I spent physical time with everyone in here, but Greg 
and I have been in Facebook kind of land a little bit, sort of peering from one another across the way. And Greg, Greg is another sort of originator who has an idea of like, I won't say what it is, but it's more 4D free space. And I'll just pass it over to Greg because part of what's happening here, I think is, is this creative nexus point of originators wanting to change the world. And in a sense, we're all originators. And in a sense, each of us has the ability to bring something beautiful in the world. But I, I think we really need help. We need to work together. And so each of us has a piece of the pie. And the, there's so much that needs to be said. And there's not enough time, like five minutes each, that, that's nothing, right? So I would just like to go over to, to Greg and to sort of finish off. And then once we're finished with Greg, then Zamir, if you could put a, a link in the chat here or send a link to me, somehow you got to get everyone into wherever you want us to go. Yeah, right? I'll put it in the chat. And I think it'll speak to a lot of things that you guys have all been talking about. Actually, once you get in the world, you'll be like, oh, they've done this. But anyways, I'm going to take off, you guys. OK. Thanks, See you, Linz. Bye, you guys. Brick says bye. All right. She just gets really Hi. overwhelmed with group video chat, so that's why she spoke. But <laughs> same on okay. her behalf. Right. Okay. Great to see you, Lindsay. Great to see you too. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. So, Greg, we got ten so, minutes. I, 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 I'd like to say as few words as possible. Send you a package tomorrow that you can, a physical material that you can then share with the group next week that's my goal for this my tangible goal for this week but to get into it a little bit i have a brand called stay timeless and i had a show in i i, I opened that show in uh, in new york uh, five years ago i think if you google stay timeless you can there's a press release there i'll, I'll send it to you anyway it's um it's about uh, languaging everything we're talking about into a uh, what I call retail activism so that there's a uh, an ability to create an economic platform that's ba it's a, the product we have is communication and it's transparent communication so that's all about motives that are you you can't play this game with people if they don't know their motive if they're not clear about why they're here no you know know your why you know like they say so it, it's um uh, what what nova was talking about uh, i was very excited when he was because it i have a frame that i think can help um launch that tree of facts and it's um it's an interactive game and i think if i just send you the board that you can share it with this group and we can actually use it to co-author it in a in a sense so everybody coming in with their talents can actually make it it's a living frame so i want to What's, instead of in theory, I want to take our theory to practice and use this game board and, and create a viable living frame for other people to, uh, we, we just become the first players, basically. Uh, I was taking notes here in the dark, um, but it's really about uh, understanding that it's a brand of communication. I mean, you've created a, a set of car. Uh, you've created a brand of communication. Everybody's talking about communication, and that's uh, the fourth D is just really about um, time in the present moment and indigenous time. And so that all that has to do with this concept, this reality of partnering with nature, basically. So what's the mech? I think I have. The, a good piece of the mechanism for the right group of sincere people to to build it. So it's a I'm a, I'm a digital primitive, so I don't have the language, but I'm a digital primitive who wants to collaborate with digital natives so that we can build the language. 
Um, so basically, it's going to be like a a Facebook platform, but it's always now the the time frame and the the facts that the the tree of truth starts with this origin of the yin yang, basically, which is what I'll send you, which is the real meaning of the yin yang is is 365.2 is, is time. It's one year. So I don't know if I've gone over my time frame, but to start with a true fact of life that's empirical evidence and build on it, a tree of truth becomes what, what, what's the first piece of truth you want that tree to be rooted in or anchored in. And I think it, I think I have that piece that we could, and that's also the game board. So we could build this tree of truth and all the roots and as above, so below, because you've got, you've got it going in both directions. Um, it's very exciting when I was listening to Nova because I realized that we're, we're at this intersection and, and I, I'd rather just send you some material and you translate it and, and bring it into the group. I think I'm better that way to throw things at you rather than to try to explain them. I'm a better hunter gatherer than I am a uh, presenter as such, you know? I just think for the sake of what can I do to advance things here. So I have your mail address. You sent it to me a while ago and I've, I've, I've worked on this the last couple of weeks and I'm just gonna send it to you fast mail tomorrow. Nice. Okay. Uh, so we've got four and a half minutes left, uh, and we've got the place to jump to. Uh, does I mean, how about everyone take about thirty to fifty seconds and maybe say a a closing note from each of you? I, I wish we had more time. Well, okay. I'm just concerned. Make sure everybody sees or copies that link. If you lose this meeting, then it's just very inconvenient. <laughs> Has everyone and, jumped there? Because if you I mean, if people are going to jump there, do we need to do a closing, or we can just connect in there, kind of thing? Um, well, I was just hoping that everyone had a, some time to say something uh, before we stopped. Does everyone see the link? Yeah, I see the link. Just clicked on it. Just copy and paste it because I think you know once you open the place, um, once you type in your email, it's going to ask to have access to your camera and audio. So you'll have to close the Zoom room. That's all. That's why. Thank you, Zamir. That looks yeah. looks wonderful. Uh, well, Lara, would you like to go? Um, sure. Um, I really I want to make a tree of facts about trees. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? I I heard about on the radio or no, it was like a. Um, what was it? It was I was on the news, and they're like, "Oh, they're trying to stop the old growth and from being all cut down." And these people were protesting, and then it shoots to this one lady, and she was like, "Well, they're gonna die anyway. I don't see what their big fuss is, you know." And I'm just like, "Oh," and my heart just completely melted, and like. Are you kidding me? Like she has no facts about trees and what they are doing. And here she is on TV saying, well, these people are, you know, taking my time. I can't drive through all because of a tree that's gonna fall down and, you know, rot in the ground anyway, <laughs> as if rot doesn't mean anything either. But yeah, anyway, so I, I really, um, it reminded me of that and how we definitely need facts about everything, like true, real facts. And it would be so nice to have a platform or like a thing that everybody can climb into and do that. I, I love that idea, Nova. I think that's great. Um, Jordan, what else? Um, I'm just saying there's two minutes left. Like yeah. If everyone gets a chance to speak, mm -hmm. Jordan. In conclusion, I'm really excited about all the passions that are being voiced and the gifts and the dreams in, in our group. Um, I'm There's a little post about this map on, uh, on our group thread. Uh, it's just, yeah, just your five, five, put five of your gifts into 
each of the the five um, communication spaces, sacred space, personal one on one group space, but just choose one of your gifts and just allocate it to one of those um, areas. And that can and you can submit those just to the Facebook page or to the email that's in the post on our page. Five gifts five, 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 to the to um, allocated to each of the spaces. And that was for last week. So we, if we can just, yeah, just get everybody to, to submit those. And also add, there's a value section. There's the, there's the spaces and the values if you see on the map. So also include the values I would suggest for this week. So this, the, um, how can I, how can I say? Yeah, well, follow, you can follow the map. It just basically, there's a picture of the map on the post and, and basically just fill it out with the five spaces and each of the values. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Nova? Uh, I pass. Genova? Uh, I just to let you know that I've been recording everything like writing it all in notes in a Word document. So we'll have a, a transcription of our conversation. I might have to go through the whole thing again.